Welcome to the Skillick Explains video. This week, why commercial property funds are in the news for all the wrong reasons. Now, they are in the news. Recent headlines include contagion worries over property fund suspensions. That was the FT. Property fund suspensions could get nasty, said Business Insider. And then Bank of England mulls property fund shake-up to stop panic selling, said The Telegraph. So in this video, I want to look at what's gone wrong and how investors might have avoided getting entangled in this problem. Now, it's not an overnight problem. Basically, commercial property as an asset class has had a bit of a bull run. There's been lots of money going into it. And you can see that up to Christmas, the net flow was positive, according to the Investment Association, in terms of money going in. But from Christmas, some investors have started to think, maybe we're at the top of the market for commercial property. And for various reasons, money has actually been leaving this type of fund. But that was before the referendum result, when a lot of people, I think, maybe thought we'd stay in, we Brexited, and suddenly that created panic, and it's hit directly this particular part of the market. Now, how? Well, basically, Brexit created all sorts of worries about the economy. There have been forecasts of gloom and doom, forecasts of recession next year, of businesses leaving London, banks packing up shop, moving out, for example, and that's created a lot of nervousness around commercial property, on top of the fact that actually it's been in something of a bull market for quite some time. Investors started demanding their money back. In a nutshell, bigger funds, controlling around 17 billion of assets, we're talking about half a dozen or eight big funds, suddenly went, we can't actually meet these redemptions, we don't have the cash to pay investors back. And that's when it hit the headlines and a degree of panic set in. So, which part of the fund sector are we talking about here and what could an investor have done or do about it in the future? We are talking about a certain style of fund. These are commercial property funds, although this could be a problem in other parts of the market, as I mentioned in a moment, and they are the open-ended style. Now, as a reminder, I've covered this in other videos, it is the open-ended style of fund, the unit trust or the open-ended investment company, where this is a particular problem because of the way they work. So imagine for a moment, investors want to buy 100 million units of one pound each in a new fund. That gives the fund 100 million pounds to play with, and it puts 90 million into property. It's a commercial property fund and keeps 10 back as a kind of safety net in case investors pick up the phone the next day wanting to sell the units they've just bought. Now, in a bull market, property values rise. So the property value rises to 120 million, let's say. The fund's still got 10 million pounds in cash. And the way these things work is to get to the new unit value, crudely speaking, you take the value of the fund, 130 million in total, divide by the 100 million units that are still out there in issue to get a price of £1.30. So investors are going to be quite happy and their choices are buy more units after all the price is rising, looks good, keep the ones they've got or sell them. And if they choose to sell, remember the fund should be okay if a small number choose to sell because the fund has kept back £10 million in cash for just that purpose. Now, in a bear market, things could go wrong and here's why. Let's say the fund only owns £80 million of the property because in a bear market, property prices start falling, so the fund's property is worth less than it was, and they've still got the £10 million in cash as a safety buffer. That translates into a unit price of more like 90p, the £90 million fund value divided by the 100 million units in issue. And that means investors might be less happy because essentially they've paid a pound to get into the fund and they're being told they can only sell units for 90p. And the point is this, with an open-ended structure, you have to sell those units back to the fund. There's no open market like there is for stocks and shares in the normal way. Choices, they can hang on in there and see if the property market recovers, for example, or sell up. And you might think, well, that's fine. Of course they can sell up. Some of them can sell because there's 10 million pounds of cash in the fund. But what if 20 million unit holders all panic together because of press headlines, want to dump their units, that's 18 million pounds worth of cash the fund's got to come up with, and it's only got 10 million. What now? Now you might say, sell some assets and raise the cash, Mr. Fund Manager. But they can't, because property is not a liquid asset. As you, if you've ever bought a house, you'll know that. It takes ages to sell a property sometimes, and it's non-divisible. You can't just sell a chunk of it. You can't just say, well, I'll sell the front door. So essentially, fund managers, faced with not being able to dump assets quickly enough, can either adopt bid-based pricing, you'll see that in the news, I'll explain that in a moment, or gating. And that's the one they've gone for in a lot of cases. They simply say, we are not going to let you sell units back for the time being. We're suspending sales of units. 
Now, bid-based pricing, you'll see this mentioned, so I'll mention it here. Certain types of open-ended fund can do this. Imagine you've got an NAV-based unit price of 90p. What the fund might do, if it's allowed to, is say that investors wanting to buy units pay more than we're willing to buy units back from investors for. So in other words, our bid price is below our offer price. I've made up a spread here. Now, bid-based pricing is just fund managers saying, Short term, I want to make it difficult for investors to sell. Because imagine, two days ago, you paid the offer price to buy units in this fund, and suddenly, you're told by the fund manager, if you want to get out, we'll only give you 86p. Well, that is a huge loss in a short space of time, so that might be enough to discourage you from selling, especially given you've probably paid an initial charge to gain in the first place. All right, so that might be enough to put you off. If it isn't, what funds will tend to do is gate investors. Uh, and basically, only certain types of fund can do this bid-based pricing. You have to dual price in the first place. If they're not, then gating is simply saying, we're not going to let you sell units back to the fund for the time being. Now, solutions. You might be thinking, well, crikey, how would I avoid this situation? Well, the brutal answer would be caveat emptor. In other words, understand that commercial property is a relatively illiquid asset. So despite the fact it's boomed, there are risks. And it's not the only asset class that can suffer liquidity issues. Sometimes bonds can, for example, as well. And open-ended funds are not a good structure to buy that sort of asset through because of the way they work. Because essentially, money required to buy back your units as an investor has to come from the fund. And that can be a problem if the market seizes up. Now, if you're thinking that's a bit brutal, there are other ways of looking at this. Don't buy illiquid assets such as property, and I'd argue bonds, for example, through open-ended vehicles. Do it through a closed-ended vehicle that's exchange-traded, like an investment trust. That means you can just offload shares, albeit the share price will reflect any problems in the underlying fund, but at least the liquidity is there. Or think about a direct portfolio. All right, so if you're a bond investor, for example, why wrap what you're buying up in a fund where you can't see what's under the bonnet? Why not use something a bit more open, like a portfolio, which solves a couple of problems, including potentially this one? Lots of ground covered there. Questions to the usual place. And to watch related videos, please go to killickexplains.com.